YCS Ghent coming to a close this weekend. One of the more rather interesting events that I think we've gotten the chance to really see along with YCS Niagara. So we're going to be covering multiple deck profiles uh, from these events, just kind of as a little showcase to what was going on. The first list we're going to be looking at is the top 32 list that was shown up in Ghent that was playing Bus or excuse me, it was Niagara actually. I was playing Buster Blader. Now, a lot of people were kind of taken back by this and were just like, what is going on here? How is this man's doing so well with this? Well, one of the things that we saw from the boards with this was this deck was ending on Scarlight. This deck was also ending on Heavenly Spheres with the Buster Blader lock. So you have a bounce, a negate, and you have a soft lock on the opponent's extra deck where they can't swash summon. I don't know what what you're going to be able to do to break that board because it just doesn't seemingly seem like it's going to be a good idea or something possible for you to actually do. So, in the long run, yeah, combo ability is great for this deck. Being able to go through the full dragon combo is excellent. Downside, you're playing bricks like Buster Blader, so you know, there's only so much that you can do to not brick, but the power that you get with this deck, uh, your opponent is just going to have a terrible time trying to out Buster Blader. So, let's kind of dig on in here to, and see uh, really what was going on here with this Buster Blader deck. So we have one copy of Black Dragon Collab Serpent, two copies of the Buster Blader being able, honestly... Since we're in like a dragon format, I wouldn't be surprised to see these Buster Bladers getting fat, considering full guard dragon combo and things like that. Then we have the triple copies of the Buster uh, Swordsman, um, just your standard equip onto this. Uh, you can tribute its Buster Summon to Buster Blader from your hand or graveyard. Um, outside of that, like this is the basic one that's going to search for destruction swords. Then we're bagging a mini Crusadia engine of three Draco, um, just for the core special summoning of this, able to step through multiple other creatures. Um, pretty basic. One copy of Bigfoot, and then two copies of Mothman. Ma Mothman's option to discard Drawl to set a Buster Blader to the graveyard for you to lone fire it back or something to that effect is actually pretty cute for combo ability. Then we have two copies of Danger Nessie. Two Jackalope and two copies of Suchinoko. And then we're playing two copies of Defrag. Standard special so summon this card from your hand acts as a dragon. Um, I mean, also being able to dump a Buster Blader into the graveyard. Uh, if you've noticed, if you hard get to the Buster Bladers, it's not like it's an issue to get rid of them. Then we have the one copy of Distrudo. Triple copies of the Dragon Buster, the Destruction Sword. So this is the broken card. So you can target one Buster Blader you control. Equip this card from your hand or your side of the field to that target. While the equip monster, well, while this card is equipped, your opponent cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck. So this is the thing that grants you the soft lock on the opponent that they can't actually do anything. And it's actually really cool, even in the year 2019, that this is still relevant. Then we have two copies of Jester Confit. Just an auto special summon acts as another extender for your deck. One copy of Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon and one copy of the Wyvern Buster. Spells, we have triple copies of Twin Twisters. Triple copies of the World Legacy Guard Dragon. Honestly, this in the deck, being able to just move over so you can do full Guard Dragon combo and revivability is great. Then we have the one copy of the Destruction Sword Memory. So you can discard one Destruction Sword card, special summon a Buster Blader from your deck. Then you can banish this card from your graveyard to Fusion Summon a Buster Blader from your extra deck by banishing Fusion Materials on it from your graveyard. So as long as you see that Buster Blader, you can just yeet it out of existence and go ahead and combo set up with Sword of Memories. And then we have the triple copies of Prologue. So this lets you send one Destruction Sword and one Buster Blade monster from your deck to the graveyard to special summon one Buster Dragon from your extra deck, but destroy it during the end phase. Then you can banish this card from your graveyard. This turn Destruction Sword cards you control cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. So this does grant you a protection clause, plus you get the chance to, you know, see Buster Dragon. Then we're playing two copies of the Trap Trick so that we can actually get to Prologue, because this is probably the best, like, card we have in our deck. The uh, extra deck here, we have one Triple Burst, two copies of Ceruja. We're kind of taking advantage of the turbo ability of Ceruja, granting us the ability to get to our Buster Bladers and our combo pieces. One copy of Al Mirage, one Lambda, one Heavenly Spheres, one Pisty, one LP, one Agrapain, one Mr. Soldier of Chaos. If all else fails with the Buster Blader, you can just make an indestructible Soldier of Chaos. One Archfiend Abyss, 
two Buster Dragon, one Borlod Savage, and one Buster Blader the Dragon Destroyer Swordsman. Side deck here, triple Denko Rekka, triple Lava Golem, triple Mind Control, two EEV, triple EV matched, and one copy of Imperial Order. Wrapping up the giant, of just massive secret that was very well kept. Seeing Buster Blader do stuff, like I said, is pretty scary in today's format. Like, I actually was very much looking forward to seeing this deck, and it, it lives up to all my expectations. Now, next up, we have the Sky Striker list coming out of YCS Ghent, Mr. Simon He's list himself. Now, Simon kind of pushed some norms on this deck a little bit, showing us that our friend Appaloosa actually can be relevant in this deck. Shark Cannon for revivability and things like that, absolutely very crucial and things like that. And there can only be one. This card sticking around this format, this card is getting better and better as the days are going on for Sky Strikers. Just auto-flipping this turns off the whole Orcus matchup. Your opponent now has to play Al Mirage to get around it. So, we have triple copies of Ash Blossom, triple copies of Ray, two copies of Cosmic Cyclone, two copies of Foolish Barrel Goods with the one Metal Foes Fusion, and of course, one Mind Control, two Pot of Desires, one Rota, triple copies of Area Zero, one Afterburners, one Jamming Waves, one Eagle Booster, one Hornet Drones, two Shark Cannon, triple Widow Anchor, one multi-roll, one Hergillies base, triple engage, one terraforming, and the one copy of Upstar Goblin. And then traps, we have triple imperm and triple copies of There Can Only Be One. Very standardized for what you would expect for this format. Now, extra deck down here. We have one Topological Bomber Dragon, triple Shizuku, one Kaina, one Kagari, triple copies of Hayate, one copy of Ningrisu, just general spot removal for this, also free shoot off. Uh, for anything that you don't want sitting around in your own field. One Phoenix, one Hita, one Boral Sword, one Appaloosa, and the one copy of the Mega Fleet. Mega Fleet's general adaptability right now is actually insane. You're able to take advantage of your opponent's own Cyber Dragon monsters and just get a free contact out, and then you know you can start off your own combo. This card's lifeline right now is... It, this card does so much work for all the decks right now. Then you have triple copies of Lancia, triple Ghost Bell, one Mind Control, Triple Shared Ride, one System Bound. Interesting to see that this is in Simon's side, even as like a straight one of. Um, it was very interesting to see this. Like, I don't know how I feel about this. This card's good and bad, um, but I don't know. If it resolves, it resolves. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And we have two copies of Twin Twisters and two copies of Summon Limit, wrapping up Simon He's fourth place list. So definitely more interesting than not, honestly. Uh, just the power of there can only be one is crazy. Now with this all being said and done, the finalist ending up winning the YCS in Ghent this weekend was actually Lunalite Orchest. Now, there are interesting tech choices between this and the list that got second place in America. One of those big tech choices was actually the use of Gizmek. Um, actually interesting to see that this card is able to be used defensively and offensively. Um, one big thing that they pointed out on stream um, that they thought was a good play during the day was Gizmeking during the end phase, but there were a lot of times where they, we saw that a Gizmek was in the hand, and it just wasn't correct to special summon it during the end phase, because that banishing from the extra deck can be a bit costly. So one thing to note about this, um, at least in the long run, is what Gizmek actually kind of offers to this deck. Um, you do have to understand that in terms of combability and extenders, it might not always be the best play. So this is ye old Lunalite Orcust. Gotta love this deck. So we have one Armageddon Knight, one copy of Zephyros the Elite, triple copies of Mothman, two Nessie, two copies of Jackalope, two Tsuchinoko, one Giz Mekarochi, triple copies of Kumamungus, one Lunalite Emerald Bird, triple copies of the Kaleido Chick, triple Tiger, two copies of Yellow Martin, Mr. Symbol Skeleton, Harpoor, two Orcus Nightmare, triple Tenki, ye old one of Foolish Barrel, triple Goods, triple Perfume, one in pre-order, one Serenade Dance, and one copy of Mr. Crescendo. Extra deck down here, we have one Phoenix, one Mermaid, one Griffin, only two Galtea, one Curious Boy, one Boral Sword, one Tornado Dragon, one Force Trix, one Nyala, one Azathoth, one copy of Dingrisu, Tiger King, Abyss Dweller, and one Mega Fleet. Side deck, triple no material, triple Nibru, 
One Starving Venom and triple copies of Super Poly. Triple Twin Twister and two copies of Red Reboot. Wrapping up the first place list. Honestly, this looks very standard for what I'd be expecting. A lot of this stuff has become very standardized. We're not using Azathoth to make sure that our opponent can't interfere with us, and we're just making these cheesy OTK boards, or, you know, doing Nightmare Griffin things off of Curious, whichever board you want to produce. So let's look out for this round of deck profiles. We'll have more later this afternoon as well for you guys, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Peace out. The ride never, well, truly ends. Thank you, patrons. Without you guys, I don't know what I'd be wearing in these videos. I might be a triple shuffle and all over again. Guys, please also check out Vancol40 for some awesome Vanguard content. Some other interesting stuff you might find up here on the left or in the description as well. Thanks for watching.